Hello? Okay, hold on. Hello? How you doing, Grandmaster? Pretty good. Uh, you have a couple minutes to do that quick interview? Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to... You know, I only can give you uh, some uh, things like from uh, maybe 1950. Okay. You know, information. Because other than that, you know, everything is just uh, hearsay or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just in a... Just like you. Because, uh, you know, when, when he was uh, married to my mother, my mother didn't even know that that uh, he was teaching Kempo. And when I told, when I told her sister a few years ago, she started to laugh. Because, huh. you know, she kept, he kept them in the dark. He never said anything, you know, he was a very uh, strange man. But, you know, go ahead and uh, let's see where we can go. Well, what, what was, uh, you're talking about his wife, your mother? My mother, yeah, I mean, you know, he never, uh, even, his, even his students didn't know, you know, his family life like that. I mean, he was very, uh, you know, to himself, mm -hmm. you know, like Thomas Young, especially Thomas Young. They don't know very much about uh, Mitose, and, uh, you know, you'd figure that Thomas Young would know about him and all that, uh, nothing. So he was a pretty private man? Yeah. Even with me, he never, you know, spoke about anything. You know, I mean, he was very, uh, he never said much. Uh, I, I got a letter from, uh, that was written by Thomas Young. And, and he states in this letter that, you know, all these things that we mentioned to him, he didn't even know. Like, what do you mean? You know, like about the the art and, uh, you know, things, the name and so forth like that. Uh, that's how it was. All they did was they went to class to train, and that was it. Everybody went home. Hmm. There was no hanging around or nobody going over to his house or anything like that. What was your mom's name? Uh, Mildred. Mildred? Mm-hmm. And what was, the, what was her last name? Her, like maiden name before Matosi. Why do you need her maiden name? <laughs> oh, well, there's just, I was just asking some questions. There was some uh, stuff on the internet where people were saying that Matosi wasn't his real last name, that he used his mom's maiden name or this or that or whatever. I'm just uh, asking. You know, they, until, until they can prove, you know, the, where they got this information, until all the information can be proved, proven, then I'll go with whatever they say because I'm in a dark myself. Okay. You know, but as far as uh, uh, Mitose using using uh, my mother's name, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, what style uh, was your father teaching? See, and here's another thing. A lot of people say it was Shorinji Kempo because he mentioned that in his book. Did you read that book where he mentioned Shorinji Kempo, uh, Karate History and Traditions? No, I haven't read that book. Okay. Uh, but actually, you know, really, it isn't. Uh, uh, nobody knows. You know, just from what he says, it's a fa you know, it's a family style art. Uh, it goes back so many years. I mean, all this hasn't been proven. Sure. They say they found a temple. Why? They say because his name was at the temple, but they don't understand that. That uh, the temples in Japan was like uh, the Catholic Church in the Philippines and so forth. This is where they kept records of birth. Okay. I mean, you know, like if you were born in the Philippines, you didn't go to the, uh, the city to get registered. It was the church that <laughs> put your name down. And then these, this is what they're going by, you know, like that because his name was there, they say that was his temple. No. Well, when he referred to the temple, that's where he worshiped. You know, there's a bunch of, you know, things that people say and they just make the story bigger and bigger. Until it's a proven thing, then I think that's what you should go by.
because I'm in the dark myself. Do you know uh, who your father's instructor or main teacher was? No. He, all he'll say, all he would say that it was a art passed down through the family. He wouldn't say a specific person like his dad, you know, so forth. So where exactly was he? Um, he, he? He was born in Hawaii, right? Yeah, the Big Island. Okay, and then uh, his parents took him back or sent him back to Japan to, to train, and it was at that temple you were talking about? Oh, uh, yeah, but see, that's, a, that's another thing, too. Because I've heard that uh, uh, they have some records of him uh, being in school in Hawaii, grammar school. Oh, okay. Well, that's I'm interesting. Saying, but, I, I mean, they have to prove this to me, but this is what I've heard. Okay. The, the, it's a really, I mean, it's really, you know. <coughs> Do you I think don't want to give you any information that, you know, comes out wrong. Oh, sure, I understand. You know, and uh, like I say, I've heard that uh, through the grapevine that uh, they've got even pictures of him in a grammar school in Hawaii. Huh. But I've never seen it. This is what they say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, and if he, they got pictures of him in grammar school, then how could he have gone back to Japan? Do you think that Kempo was being taught on Hawaii before your father started teaching? No, I don't think so. Uh, well, you had, uh, who was he, Miyagi that went there? Miyagi went to Hawaii? Yeah, he was there, and also Motobu was there. But Motobu, from what I heard, when he went to Hawaii, and uh, when he went to Hawaii, they couldn't, uh, he couldn't enter the islands. Because in order to enter the islands, you needed somebody, some family there mm -hmm. in the islands. And, and, and this is what uh, people were saying, that uh, Motobu was his uncle and so forth. And the, uh, a lot of people went for that story until I disproved this. And then the, uh, the, uh, the Tracy brothers brought the, uh, the Motobu family to Vegas. I guess they thought that they were, they were going to say that, yeah, the Tose was a relative. And at this, uh, at this gathering, they, they disproved it. They said they didn't even know who Mitose was. Hmm. See? Do you, do you know how to spell that? Uh, uh, is it Motobu? Motobu. M-O-T-U-B-U. And see, I mean, and so now, so when that, that, uh, when they made that announcement at this gathering, I mean, it was a blow to the, uh, the Tracys. Because here they thought that now they really found a link to Kempo, Motobu's, I mean, Mitose's relatives. Well, they didn't even know Mitose, see? And then all of a sudden, now they needed, they needed to scramble around, scramble around, and then we were at this uh, banquet. And out of the blue sky, they bring me up there on the, uh, the platform to say, Here's our our link there to uh, Mitosi, uh, and they were trying to get Motobu's family. That is a big old thing. Yeah. And then this guy comes out. And this guy has the nerve to come on the stage and say that this is my instructor. I never trained the guy. He was one of Tracy's people. To all the Kempo people there. Oh, that one of the Tracy people were saying that they trained underneath you? One of the guys said that he was, uh, that I was his teacher. Who was that? I don't want to bring up names, but it was false. 
Okay. You know, I never trained with that guy. But anyway, it, it's just a big old, you know, when I, when I hear things like this, you know, it, it goes in one ear and then it goes out the other ear. The only thing that's, the only thing that, uh, that, uh, that is really the thing that nobody else can claim is that I am his son and I am his bloodline. See? Mm-hmm. No matter what anybody says, uh, they can't say that they're a bloodline. And even, did you ever read Mitos' last book that he wrote? What, what was that called? What is, uh, what is True Self-Defense? It's a, a big black book. Huh, I never or did. Or a leather bomb book. Well, in that book, he states that the only grandmaster besides him that can assume grandmastership in Koshiru, they have to be of bloodline. And then Bruce Judnick went around and started telling people, oh, no, that's not true, because the samurai code was different. And all that other baloney, man. <laughs> but anyway, but the book states it. It's the, it's the, uh, his last thing that he wrote, and it's in the book. What do you think, uh, what are your feelings about Bruce Dutnik? I mean, for him being, uh, claiming to, you know, take over, and he said uh, he's Bruce got some... Bruce Dutnik is just, uh, he's just full of it, you know, I, he's just full of it, uh, I, his, you know, I, I look at, he's no threat to me. And uh, when he sees my students, or he meets my students, he goes into this same old routine. If he's in a group with people, he brings the student aside, the black belt aside, and he talks to him in private. And he says the same thing. You know, I love Tom, and a whole bunch of old, I don't the guy is something else. But he, but I heard that he's saying a lot of, a lot of things about me, and uh, and the pe- the bad thing about it is that the people who know, they don't want to come out and and say what was said to them, because there's a lot of people that know that Bruce, you know how he is, uh, he's not the. He tossed it and give him the, uh, because he had this grandmaster, and listen to this, he claims he has a certificate. And in the certificate, it says that he is a master. Of course you do, right? Mm-hmm. There's also this guy, uh, what, uh, I don't know his name. It's a Mexican guy and uh, who was in prison with Mitose, and he also made him a master. See, this master, one, two, three, four, five, I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, a lot of them didn't even, didn't even spend maybe two days with him. Never trained, that's for sure, with him. So, you know, it's all a bunch of boo. I mean, I don't even, uh, you know. How long did you train with your father? Oh, about a year and a half. And the training is different. You know, I don't know what you think, what is training. Uh, the training he, he did was not not your typical everybody line up in a dojo and you go through strikes and you go through your kicks and so forth. You know how a person would run his classes. Uh-huh. And no, his, his training was very, you know, different. You know, and then he would put me like, a, you know, for example, in a spot like, and he would ask me questions like, stand on this chair. And he would say to me, now, I mean, you could barely understand the man anyway, you know, and uh, he would say, uh, push you off, push you off the cliff. How are you going to defend yourself? 
And, it, and immediately, in my mind, I'm going to do something fiscal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then he, then, he, then he says, then after when you give him an answer, he says, no, 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 no. No. You grab. Yeah. You grab. Yeah. You know, yeah, you grab. Why don't you complete, you know, what you're trying to tell me? Grab. And you know what the answer was? As you're falling down the side of the cliff, something. I mean, that's, that's the way how he taught. You know. You were telling me uh, last time we talked, Grandmaster, about uh, a time that you guys were out for dinner. Oh, about the the, the food? Yeah. The food was placed and all that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and then, but he, he had a lot of, uh, when he, when he, when he, when he taught you, uh, he had a lot of insight to your techniques. And like, uh, like I say, this was one time being pushed and being pushed hard. You know, when you really think about it, it's true. You know, if somebody walks up against you and he pushes you just like that, and there's a wall behind you. You know, I've seen, I've seen some so-called uh, uh, you know, high-ranking grandmasters in their own style. And I've seen them teach some techniques, some wall techniques, where if the guy pushes you, you slap the wall and you throw a front thrust, a front thrust or fr their, their kicks are a snap and, uh, to the guy. Mm -hmm. But if you're being pushed that hard, there's no way. But I've seen what Mitosa can do. And I think I'm the only person alive since after 19, like 1950, that have actually seen Mitosa in action. What was he like in action? He was like, uh, he was totally different. I mean, uh, his eyes and so forth. You know, we went down, like I said, we went down to Black Belt Magazine because he was mad. This was in L.A. Because there was an article in there that stated that uh, he had given out black belts, five black belts. And he was upset about that. And so we went down to black belt. Uh, and uh, he told the guys, you know, he didn't give out black belts. See? And then he started to say, you know, that Koshiru can be a killing art. And he demonstrated on one of my students. And he looked, <laughs> let me tell you, man. I mean, he looked like a different person. His facial expression and so forth. But, uh, you know, that's how he was. And then with other people, he would do stuff that would, not, not because he wanted to, to show the uh, the uh, the technique, you know, you know, like multiple strikes and so forth, he would do just one strike. But people didn't understand what he was trying to do. I mean, he wasn't. Uh, you need to talk to <coughs> people that worked out with him. You know, like Emperado. Uh huh. Emperado has worked out with Mitose. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the person that really worked out with Mitosi was the old guys, you know, like Emperado. Thomas Young is gone. The only one that's left is, uh, I think, uh, Emperado and uh, some other guy uh, in Hawaii. And uh, you should ask them about Mitosi, and they'll tell you the same thing. Did your father ever promote anybody to the rank of black belt? This, I don't know. You know. Well, I read something. father has a certificate. What's that? The teacher's certificate. Who does? Emperor. Oh, okay. Well, I, I saw... The child was going to the house to, to, to get some extra training. 
and uh, the Naifanji. Now, every, okay, let's put it this way. Everybody's talking about the Naifanjis, right? Okay. That that was the only form that Mitose taught. Now, everybody pretty much well know well, what the Naifanjis or Tekis looks like. You know, they're, they're like that. The Okinawan or Shotokan, uh, one, two, and three Tekis. Mm -hmm. And everybody, you know, pretty well much knows what it looks like. And so they're all saying that Mitose did the, uh, the Naifanchis. But you know that Naifanchi, when it was taught, it was totally different. How do you and your traditional way of doing it. Mm. And you know who backs this up? Who? Is Imperato. So, Imperato used to take hard style karate. And he demonstrated the moves to Naifanchi. And which I recognized right away. That was your traditional Naifanchi. But he told me the the form that he learned from Mitose didn't look like that. Hmm. And it's one of their forms that they, they teach. <laughs> what, what? I mean, it looks kind of like the Naifanji, <laughs> but it's not. It don't look the same. Was, uh, was Mitose, um, was, uh, he, uh, Imperado's only teacher, do you know? No, Chow, Professor Chow. So, hey. Imperado pretty much learned everything from Chow then. Yeah, and when Chow was teaching, Imperado told us that when Chow was teaching, he basically taught, you know, whatever Mitose was teaching then. And then later on, incorporated the so-called uh, Kung Fu moves, see? As far as we're concerned, Emperado, there's this guy we talked to in Hawaii, and uh, the techniques that Emperado did, you know, they, they were basically changed. Uh, a little strike added here, something added here, the forms, they were talking about forms. Oh yeah, we, we just added some moves to make it look fancy and so forth. Do you, do you know when your father started teaching in Hawaii? Was it in the late 30s? You know, I really can't say. You know, I really can't say. Uh, all I know that he started teaching at the, at the, the military. Uh, this must have been in the 40s. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, like I say, nobody knows. My mom didn't even know, and she was married to that guy. The only reason why Professor Chow, Professor Chow, we know about Professor Chow and so forth, is because Professor Chow used to live with my parents. Mm -hmm. They, he used to drive Mikosi around. Huh. He used to take him around. In fact, Professor Chow was in love with my mother. I didn't know that. <laughs> There's a lot of things people don't know. See? He was in love with my mother. So, I mean, was it just one of those things? Was there an affair or anything? Or well, he just no, liked it her? wasn't a, an affair. But, uh, but he was in, lo in love with my, my mother. See. And did you uh, you grew up with your parents or? No, I was adopted. Huh. See, and then later on, got hooked up with them. It was my mom first, and then him. I mean, I seen him around. I knew, uh, I knew that he was teaching up the hill. Uh, at that the Chinese uh, mission, you know, stuff like that. Uh, when did you meet your father, do you remember? <laughs> oh, I was about six years old. What year was that? Oh, 
maybe 46, 1946, somewhere around there. I was only a kid, you know. So do you teach Kempo now? Yes. <laughs> and is that your main um, main job? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm retired. Shucks. How old are you now? I'm 64. I'm going on 65. Huh. I mean, I do seminars. I mean, if you were to look at me, you'd think I was in my... <laughs> so you're in pretty good shape, huh? Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they, they mistake my age, you know. So did your father, like, pass the system down to you when he passed away, or did he do it beforehand? How did that work? It started with, uh, it started with the, I guess in the 60s, the late 60s, when he told me that we were talking about ranking, and he says, he said to me, you can be any rank you want, he says, you have my blood in you. You can be any degree you want now. See? And is this after you trained with him, or just... Yeah. No, this was while we were uh, working out, messing around. You know, and then, you know, people people question this. You know, every time... I have a couple of people who was there with me. And who, who've seen the training and so forth. And uh, there's a lot of, I don't understand, some of the people, they, I'm, not, I'm sort of like Mitose. You know, I don't uh, say very much. I go to tournaments. I'm unapproachable. People find it hard to approach me. You know, it's not because I, I, I it's just the way how I look like that. You know, and I carry myself. Yeah. You know, I'm. I, if you ask anybody, you know, I'm. They will, when they first see me, you know, it's kind of hard. Should I talk to him or what? But I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I'm a really nice guy. It's just that, you know, it's hard. To, I'm not the kind of guy it's easy to come up to and talk to and approach. But you know what? <clears throat> You're going to this Hawaii thing? Yes. You know, I'm. when it comes down to, uh, if I have something to say to a person, you know, I, I figure the best way to do it is just go up to the guy and tell him what it is and whatever he wants to do. You know, Avery Ghana, he's throwing his HMAI, right? Who's this? Avery Ghana. The Hawaiian Martial Arts International? Yes. In Hawaii? Uh Uh-huh. Well, a couple years ago, you know, he invited me through uh, this guy, Stephen Dowd, and I decided to go. And then, my students told me that uh, uh, Terry Lee was going to be there. And how could they put you in the same category as Terry Lee? So they were upset. So I went to the tournament Saturday, which was the uh, KSDI tournament. And Sunday, I went to the to that HMAI, you know, that Hawaiian martial arts thing. Mm-hmm. I talked to Avery Garner about that. In fact, I called him on the phone first. And then he said he would take care of the problem. Then when I got there, uh, you know, I talked to Avery Gunn because they were using the code of...
mm-hmm. or they don't use it anymore. Because I gave, I told them, you know, that that coat of arms is not his to use. That belongs to the Mitose family. And so now he, he switched it over to some Hawaiian dude, and now he has another one. They don't do it anymore. They don't use that coat of arms anymore. Because I, I don't know I just go up to you and I'll tell you how I feel. You know, I'm straightforward. You know, I don't want to, you know, to waste my time. I won't waste your time. And also, when I went to Spain to do a seminar, they told me that, oh, yeah, uh, James Muro, an eighth degree of Koshiru, was up here. And so I went there, and, uh, and I talked to James Muro, too. I said, how can you claim to be a tenth don in Koshiru? I said, I told him that they can't be two presidents of the United States. And so I don't know what he did, but I haven't heard anything about this. And uh, then he offered, he wanted me to join their organization, you know, to be part of their organization. Mm -hmm. I said, what for? I have my own. But anyway, and, you know, things went on and on, but, uh, but I think I got that problem settled, see. It sounds like it. Yeah, because uh, I don't, you know, they, they, they do all their ring, they, they're just so full of it. You know, they do all their, the things they feel they're going to do. Why? Because nobody says a word to them. You know, I'm waiting, one of these days I'm going to run into Bruce like I did one year. And uh, I'm not the type to, uh, you know, back down. And uh, Bruce was like, uh, I mean, I, he just went off into another world, you know. But uh, What year did you meet up with him? Uh, this was when they had a tournament in uh, San Jose. This was with, for Emperado. When Bruce, when Bruce Jutnik thought that, uh, because he wined and dined Emperado, uh, he wined and dined Imperato that uh, that that he would go with Bruce, and then a few months later, an article in Black in a magazine came out, and Imperato fully supported me. <laughs> See, what uh, what do you think your uh, fondest moment of being with your father would be? You know, I think uh, it would be. When he was in in prison, when he was in prison, mm-hmm. and to see this man really humble himself, you know, not to me, but to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when he was in prison, he really. He really got turned around, you know, he really got into the uh, the Bible. And uh, he actually had Bible study with my ex-wife, who's also, you know, into the, uh, the Christian thing. In fact, she bought him this Bible, see. And, you know, this thing of being, uh, you know, there was a lot of... Uh, how you call that uh, disharmony? Mm-hmm. But I think when 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 he accepted, no, he well he had already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. But to see him the way he was, you know, I mean, it just made everything all right. So he was like peace with himself. Yes, I mean, you know, when he, when he when he died, you know, he, he wasn't. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I knew where he was going. And, uh, you know, when I visited him, and then here's another thing. Bruce Jodnick says he was the only one that was visiting Mitose during his last days. That's funny. I never ran up, I never met up with him while I was there. The only guy that was going to Folsom was uh, Arnold Gollum, see? And then 
Mitasi, when when he was in prison, uh, when he his last days, they had just put him in a, a room with a nightstand and nothing else. There was no equipment or anything like that. Did Bruce Jutnik ever train with your father in prison? I think there was. No, some... no, he never did. <laughs> Is that even possible to do? No, it's impossible. Impossible. <laughs> they don't even allow martial arts in prison. <coughs> you have to... Uh, <coughs> this is what he was saying in the beginning, that he trained with Mitosi. Then I came out with an article, and I said, how can he train with Mitosi? They don't allow that in prison, which is true. And uh, so then he changed his story. Oh, it was through just conversation like this and so forth. And then it, then he had said that he had this guy, uh, Santana, who was a guard there at that time, <laughs> and uh, that he set up this things like that, which was untrue. Because you know why? San and Santana was a friend of Bruce Stratton. Try calling him up and asking him about Bruce Stratton. <laughs> hmm. You see, all of Bruce Stratton's followers at one time are no longer with him. They're no longer with him. Did Bruce Jutnik, uh, did he, uh, or Jutnik, did he uh, train with the Tracy brothers? He trained with, uh, 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 I don't know what Tracy brother, but Tracy brothers, but I know he was in a Tracy system. Uh, the guys from Chicago. Uh, you know, there was a senior instructor. Uh, I don't have his name offhand. Uh, I think I think it was Babcock, Babcock or something like that. When was that? That was back in the uh, the uh, late 70s, I think. And uh, he also trained under Rick Alamany. And then he also trained under uh, Andy Apoll, uh, Tang Sadu Stylus. And uh, then he went with this guy, I forgot his name. Uh, his, uh, Tracy's uh, right hand man. And uh, so then, uh, then he got his forms from Santana, who was a Shotokan stylist, which he incorporated into Koshiro and called it, you know, the forms that uh, Koshiro did. So, so he just found out about your father through probably those guys or the Tracys or someone along the line? He found out through this George Santana, see, that Mitose was in Folsom and went to visit him, see. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, you hear a story here and you hear a story there and, you know. I mean, uh, my, some of them, when, when, when my student calls me up, I say, oh yeah, okay, you know. It's got to the point where, you know, it's like a circus, <laughs> I ain't kidding you. Do you, uh, do nobody you can anything yet. Do you have a school? No, I had a school. How long did you have a school? Oh, shucks. Well, I, I just moved back to Ania. I think I had the school for maybe like, uh, I don't know, eight years or so. And where was it moved at? to Ania. And then before that, I had a school in San Mateo. Wherever, whatever location I moved to, I, op I usually open up a school. So, you know. And where do you say you're living now? I moved back, I moved back to Antioch in uh, July. Oh, okay. I'm back in Antioch now. Where but about? I still have my black belts like that, you know. And then I have this class that I'm teaching. So there's about nine of them that I teach. How many black belts have you promoted? Not too many. <laughs> Not too many.
Would you say like more than five, less than oh, ten? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, not like some systems, you know. In a year, they promote 20, 30 black belts. Yeah. Who would you say your most senior student is or who you're most proud of? Uh, you know, everybody's, everybody has their thing, you know. Uh, we have like uh, Tolentino, Bill Tolentino. He's uh, a form man. And uh, then you have uh, Ken Torres, who also does forms, and Ikumates. And then you have Tim Bowles, who's a combination Chinese stylist, you know, Kempo, uh, and also a good freestylist. So as far as I can't take credit for Tim because Tim's dad is a student of mine. So, but I'd say maybe, uh, you know, Tim Bowles for all around. And at one time, uh, Bill Tolentino, because he won the Triple Crown. That was in self-defense, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of students. And then you have, uh, we have a student that's... Uh, Who's, uh, he just got back from out of the Marines. I, he was one of my good students. And now he's into grappling. So, you know. What's his name? <laughs> Baccio, Nick Baccio. What would your father think about the, uh, the Kempo world today in 2005? Well, I don't know. I mean, he started it. It's his fault. You know, everything that's happening now is his fault. He had no control over what he was doing. And he left them. He deserted his students. See? Well, did he just feel that they weren't learning the right way, or...? Well, he wanted them to become the you know, turn your cheek the other way kind of students. And you know, starting in Hawaii, Hawaii wasn't like that. <laughs> there were there were fighters in Hawaii. And then, so he stopped teaching there in Hawaii. Then he came up here. And then he uh, started to teach and then stopped and then never went back to it. Where was this at? This is when he, when he moved to L.A. He never got involved with the martial arts. And then, the late, the late 60s, he got sparked up again. And then in the 70s, he was pissed off, man, really pissed. You know, called me up and blamed me for everything, for getting him to come back into the art and so forth. Oh, man. <laughs> but anyway, it was all, you know, uh, it's personal things that he had said. And um, that was it. Did your father ever tell you what it was like back in the 40s and stuff like that when he was teaching? No. Mm -mm. No. He just thought, you, what, what, like I say, you need to ask the old timers and let them tell you. You'll be surprised what kind of person he was. You know, the people, like I say, the only person that, that knew him that well and still didn't know him personally, but as an instructor, and that's alive now, and seen some of the things, the outburst that he did like that would be Imperato. You know, I can tell you what he did, but if I tell you, I, you know, you think I'd be making it up. But if you get a direct from the person, then you're gonna know that, uh, you know, how he was. See? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, anybody that tells you anything different, all you gotta do is, they gotta show you proof. They 
can just say this and say that and say that, oh, that Mitosi was here and yeah, he studied here, he studied under this person and that person. You gotta have proof. Now the, I hear that they're saying that he had taken lessons in Kempo from some guy in Hawaii. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going around and you just can't go by that. What about the prison thing, Grandmaster? Do you think um, that uh, you know he deserved to be put in prison? <coughs> well, if he was part of that scheme, yeah. Anybody else would go to prison too. But see that his personal life, you gotta separate that from his martial arts abilities like that. And you know, you know who tried to do that was was Ed Parker. This was at the uh, Grand Nationals in Florida, where uh, Anderson, Steve Anderson, I think he was the head of the uh, the hard stylus uh, U.S. And then you had Trias, which was U.S.K.A. And Parker had a conversation with with uh, Anderson. And told Anderson and Trius that, well, I had a, that guy was in prison like that. Because I was going to be there, too. See, I was there to accept an award. They were giving me an award. And he says, I added me, Tossie, you know, he was in prison and so forth. Did you know they clammed uh, Parker up by telling him, don't mix his personal life with him as a martial artist? See. What year was that, you know? Uh, I don't know, probably uh, maybe 85, I think. 1985, when Trias threw his, uh, was in either, was either in Florida or Chicago. Somewhere around in the 80s, anyway. Did your father ever meet uh, Ed Parker? Yeah. How did that go, do you know? They thought he was a joke. <laughs> That's what I heard. Your father thought Ed Parker was a joke? No. Ed Parker's group thought he was a joke. Oh. <laughs> because they didn't see all this strikes, you know. You know how Ed Parker, I don't know if you're an Ed Parker stylist, but what stylist are you anyway? What style are you? Well, uh... Arkin Kemple? Shaolin. Okay. This is Shaolin, when you say, Shaolin. Is it from the Castro side? Well, it, it came from uh, Chow, and then I've been promoted by C. Joe Gaskin and Hanchi Lu Angel. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, Shaolin Chuang Fa, mm -hmm. the, the, the fist way. Okay, so it's. Okay, so you guys, well, yeah, you guys call it the right way. You don't call it Shaolin Temple. Well, I, I pronounce it properly, Shaolin Chuang Fa. Okay, okay, all right, that's good. Yeah, <coughs> I don't know what to say, you know. I also got my first degree from uh, Nick Serio uh, back in um, uh, the early part of the 90s. Mm-hmm. Did you ever meet Nick Serio? Uh, no, 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 no. I've heard of him, you know. Like I say, you know, if somebody says something, you know, they got to show you some kind of proof, you know, like this multiple thing. It's, it's an on, it was an ongoing thing until the family finally came out and said, no, we don't know this person. He's not a relative. That put a stop to it. But if you go through the website, I think there's some people that still claiming Motobu as Mitosi's uncle. <laughs> huh. So, like I say, you know, if you have proof, fine. You know, the only things I believe now is what I've heard from uh, uh, Imperato, you know, and putting things together, putting some of the forms together. Uh, 
getting uh, some of the farm, uh, some stuff from Trias, and then putting putting it with the with the Kajikembo people. It makes sense, you know. And uh, and Prada did train with Mitotsi, and he's got some tales to tell. So, <laughs> who do you think trained with your father the most? You, would you say it was you? I think I'm the only one that had any, as far as from the 50s on up. Well, I'm just talking about just in general. No, I can't say that because, you know, what what they were doing back in Hawaii, I don't know what they were doing. My training wasn't like how they were training in Hawaii, you know. It's not, it was nothing about techniques itself because, I mean, those, if you were, if you if you were, you were to be able to meet him now, and you were to bring up te- techniques, tricks like that, he'll tell you straight to your face. Techniques are techniques. It's just tricks. That's all it is. <laughs> so, uh, one last question: When, when uh, your father passed away, um, did you automatically just uh, assume? Um, the title oh, of... I have a last will and testament from him, which he had, uh, it's the last will and testament that I have, and, uh, I haven't, you know, put it on a website or anything like that. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't need to. You know, I feel it's it's my personal, you know, why I'm going to do this to prove to people. But I've shown it to some people. They've read it, you know. And also, how Bruce got a hold of that, a copy of that, a copy of that Last Will and Testament, I don't know. Unless Mitosi decided to give him a copy so that he would know. You understand what I'm saying? No, that you're the true yeah, successor. Because you know why? There's some people in uh, the East Coast. One of the black belts, they had a school up there. One of the black belts found, going through somebody's thing, found my la- a copy of the Last Will and Testament and contacted me and told me, that when he read this last will and testament, he tore up his certificate from Bruce Jutney. Huh. He was so upset. Can you imagine? All those people. <laughs> all that money that you spent. All that money, all that tapes. He sent me a shoebox full of tapes that Bruce was selling that he went and purchased. So what exactly did the last will and testament say? It just said that you're the legitimate successor to your father? Or? It's the last will and testament of saying that his books, his money, I give to my, I give to the great grandmaster, Thomas B. Mithose, and all that, my son, and, you know, stuff like that. Hmm. Uh, if you were to read it, you, you know, you, anybody can see and that he had no, and then you have to remember, a master is a master. What do you mean? Certificates he was given out were all master certificates. Do you think that Bruce Jutnick got a master certificate from your father? No, that master certificate, no. The certificate he has was forged by Arnold Gollum. Who's that? Bruce's, the, he was supposed to be the headmaster of Koshiru. Mm. There's only one certificate that was signed by Mitose. And that was for that, uh, a teacher certificate. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, I see. And so the rest of them were all signed by Arnold Gollum. Huh. You know, 
spent a lot of money through a handwriting analyst to tell me that the signature on that certificate that Bruce had was forged. And so, you know, Arnie, Arnie, Arnie could have saved me a lot of time and money. If he would he admitted just, to me. Yeah, just been honest with you. Yeah, that he signed it. See. Hmm. So uh, you know. Did he ever admit to signing it? Arnie. Yeah. No. He did. Yes. Huh. He had to because the where else would he Bruce get that certificate? His certificate looked exactly like Bruce's. Exactly like Bruce's. Hmm. But him as a headmaster. So, hey. But anyway, you know. That's how it is. <laughs> uh -huh.